Nothing will crush a real estate investor's spirit like landlord stress. The difference between being successful and miserable in managing properties is education. Welcome to Landlord University, where landlords learn. Landlord University is recorded from inside the rent prep office where Stephen White and Jeff Pearson share the lessons learned from working with some of the most successful landlords. Welcome to Landlord University Night School. I'm Jeff Pearson, and I'm here with my co-host, Stephen White. Hello, Stephen. How are you doing this evening? Doing great, Jeff. Uh, Another episode of Night School, and we're about to dive into renter's insurance. So this is um, something that we get asked a lot of times is, can I mandate that my tenant have renter's insurance? And uh, the answer is undoubtedly yes, you can. So um, renters are not a protected class. And, uh, you know, in the sense that you're you're discriminating against any one particular class or anything like that and saying, well, you need to have insurance. You don't need to have insurance. You as a landlord, if you're putting it in your agreement, um, it's enforceable. You can you can make them have renter's insurance. Some states uh, some states make you have renter's insurance anyway, but a lot of states don't. It's up to the landlord. Well, that's interesting. I hadn't heard of that with the states requiring it. Yeah, I think it's going to become more and more common too. Um, this is one of those areas with the insurance that uh, it's just like car insurance too. I know there's a lot of states that that still don't legally mandate car insurance. I don't know. Does California? Yes. They do. Okay. So does New York. So, but there are some states out there that still don't. So, but I, you know, it, it's one of those no brainers to me, at least that uh, I feel like this is going to be something that eventually will kind of become the standard, you know, rental insurance is so cheap for the renter. Yes. Um, it's easy to get. It's not, you know, there, it, it's not some huge barrier to jump over. There's a lot of programs that the landlords can get hooked up with, um, almost like, the, you know, like an ancillary or an affiliate program like we talked about before, mm-hmm. where a landlord who manages several properties can hook up with, um, you know, a specific insurance agent, whether they be local or whatever, and have them work with their tenants. And so they have somebody to point them to, you know, and say, listen, do you have renter's insurance now that you can carry over to your new place? No. Well, here's my guy. Give him a call. Mm -hmm. So let's step back and look at this from the ground floor. You know, first Mm -hmm. of all, as a landlord, you are required to have insurance on your property. Right. You know, usually that is in line with your mortgage. Um, But once you have that insurance, you know, some landlords might think, well, I'm taken care of. But Mm -hmm. that's really just covering the structure and maybe some liability. And so that's protecting you, the the landlord, to a certain extent. But the renters, the renter's insurance, that's a a whole nother beast. Yes. And it's actually a pretty common misconception for renters, too. I think a lot of renters, a lot of tenants have that that mentality of, well, the landlord has insurance. I don't need to carry insurance. Um, which again, you know, the the landlord's insurance covers that landlord for the structure of their rental property, but it mm-hmm. doesn't cover any of the belongings, any of the things to the uh, to the renter. Um, you know, and, and it works both ways too. There's their insurance may cover things that would be obviously helpful to the landlord as well. Right, and you know, as you talk about that, one of the things I like to think of as a landlord is trying to provide the best customer service to my tenant that I possibly can. And, you know, thinking of it now, it makes sense. So you and I shared this article that you had from Zillow.com about why renter's insurance matters. And we'll link to that in the show notes. But from a customer service standpoint, even whether or not I'm requiring renter's insurance from my tenant, which I prefer to do, I would say give them this article because it really goes into it, gives them some good information about the differences between the landlord's property insurance and the renter's insurance and why it makes sense for renters to have insurance. Right. And, and also on, you know, again, to the benefit of the renter, there's a lot of overlap there uh, with vehicle insurance and everything else like that. So, you know, if their vehicle is damaged on the property and, you know, here in Western New York, we deal a lot of times with, trees or limbs uh, falling over during a heavy snowstorm, crushing, you know, the roof of a car or whatever. Um, you know, there's, there's things that there may be a gap in your, in your vehicle insurance that your renter's insurance would cover. So just from every perspective, it just makes sense for renters to carry insurance, yes. theft, fire, damage, 
liability, everything you can imagine, every good reason to have insurance. And again, it's super cheap. It's usually ten, twenty dollars a month. And um, you know, I know a lot of landlords that would that that offer some sort of a discount to, to be able to carry their insurance too. So, right. which may not be a, a terrible idea. Now, you mentioned that a landlord can require this in their lease mm-hmm. agreement. Are are there any states that you're aware of that? preclude a landlord from including that as a requirement? No, it's, uh, it is, you know, it, it's basically, uh, it's within the agreement. It's something that you're agreeing upon. So the only time that you're ever going to run into maybe a weird scenario is if you're, if they were already on a lease agreement where you, they, they weren't required to have that. Maybe you bought the property with a tenant already, or maybe you decided after they've been there for a year or two, now you want them to have it. And you, you have this, you know, this mindset change <laughs> You know, in which case, all you do is you, when you have them re-sign the lease, that is the new, you know, a new provision within the lease. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not, now, you know, I'm requiring that you have to carry insurance, and it's part of the, the lease agreement. Yeah, and certainly when you're adding something that significant to the lease agreement, it would make sense to run that by your attorney. And be sure your attorney knows you're adding this to the lease. This is a change to their lease, you know, with the new lease terms. So their lease is up. I'm going to have them sign another one. I want to add this in. Be sure the attorney knows that you're adding it so they can give you a heads up if there are any legal issues with adding that to the lease agreement. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it also covers the the, the renter's insurance. Um, some things, I think we talked about it in a previous episode too, where I was talking to a landlord who his insurance threatened to drop him because of the type of dog, the breed of dog that uh, one of his tenants had. Yes. So, you know, insurance, insurance can be one of those things where, you know, that the renter having their own insurance, maybe that problem would have been solved much earlier, Mm -hmm. you know, assuming that the renter is going to do the right thing and tell the insurance company everything, (laughs) exactly, um, which may or may not be realistic, but you know, it just, it never hurts to have that extra coverage, obviously. And, you know, for a landlord, if you stop and think, well, you know, that's just one more hassle for me to make my tenants get renter's insurance. How does that really affect me? I mean, you know, if somebody breaks in and steals all their stuff, why do I care? Well, the bottom line is if they don't have insurance to replace all that stuff, so they've got to go out and buy it, then you wonder, are they going to have enough money to pay their rent? Right. You know, something as simple as that, you know, somebody stole their television, their stereo and their computer, and they decide it's more important for them to replace those things and pay rent. All of a sudden you're not getting the rent payments and you have to evict them and you have to go through that whole process. Whereas if they had insurance, at least they would have gotten some, uh, some amount of, of money for that. You know, they, they won't get it all. They'd have to pay a deposit or a deductible, but they got something and they were able to get the things they needed to keep going and still pay the rent. And here, here's another great example, quick story, uh, talking to a landlord, he had kids in the unit that were playing with matches, classic story, right? Kids Mm -hmm. in the unit playing with matches and they ended up, uh, starting their dresser on fire. Um, not sure how it happened, but long story short, the dresser ended up smoldering for a long enough time. Clothes on the inside are starting to burn. So this thing is like, you know, the parents can't get it to go out. They end up having to call the fire department to, to take care of this dresser that's on fire. It's not like raging, you know, mm-hmm. according, to, according to the description. But what the fire department does is they get in there and they say, this thing, there's no way to put it out. It's been smoldering. It's like one big hot ember, basically. They end up kicking it through the wall, out the window. And now you've got damage to, and it was, I think it was on a second story as well. So that was their solution. We need to get it out of the house as soon as possible. It wouldn't fit cleanly through the window. So let's bust a hole in the wall. We'll get this thing out. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, thankfully, the tenants had renter's insurance and they were covered to go stay somewhere while the place was being fixed. So again, you know, a huge, huge benefit. It was 100% the fault of the tenants. It was nothing the landlord did. Um, And because those tenants had that type of coverage, it was way less inconvenient for everybody. The, The landlord, the tenant, everyone involved that, you know, the, the property can be repaired. Mistakes happen, obviously. The property was repaired, and the people had a place to to stay while the place was getting repaired, and it was covered by the insurance. If they were being, you know, put up at a hotel or something like that. Amazing. It's it's stuff like that that you just don't think will ever happen, yeah. and what a difference it makes. So does Rent Prep have a, a language for an addendum for a lease agreement for renter's insurance? Um. 
you know what? I don't believe that we do. I think that. Uh oh. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I think that I'm, I'm double checking right now as we speak, uh, but I do think that you know, in most cases, um, you know, if it's not an actual addendum, it's going to be put right in the language of the lease. Yes. You know that. Listen, we're this is what we're requiring. We, you know, it's just it's part of the uh, part of your obligation as a tenant to, to be here and live here. So no, no, we do not have a, an insurance addendum. So I'm making, <laughs> I'm putting that on my list. That'll okay. be one of the, the new releases here coming up. So yeah, an insurance addendum. That way, it's nice and easy. And if you already have an existing lease that you're comfortable with, you don't have to go in and completely change it. Um, you know, you can just use the addendum as a as an add-on to it. That sounds good. And yeah. you know, the bottom line, it really does make sense to require your renters to have. Uh, rental insurance. It yeah. protects them and it protects you. It's better for everybody. And as you mentioned before, the cost isn't that much, you know, 15, $20, maybe $30 a month to get insurance, depending on the level of insurance that they want and, yeah. or that they, the renters want, because all you're asking for as a landlord is basic insurance. Yeah. And good quality tenants are going to be okay with it. It's not going to scare mm-hmm. anyone off. You know, it's, uh, it's like a lot of landlords have the mentality that uh, an application fee is going to scare somebody off. The quality tenants know that these are the rules of how to play the game and they're willing to play by the rules. So, you know, I, I think that that in and of itself, you know, we, a lot of times we talk about a real easy pre-screening tool. That might be a great pre-screening tool right there. If somebody, if you tell somebody that it's required that they have renter's insurance and they start giving you a hard time about it, it's probably a good idea to go with somebody that's not going to give you a hard time about it. Exactly. Well, great, Stephen. I think that wraps up another evening of Landlord University Night School. Thank you very much. And I will talk to you tomorrow evening. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for listening to Landlord University. And remember to visit rentprep.com slash landlordu to see show notes and access free resources like forms and guides. And be sure to check out Jeff Pearson hosting his own hit podcast at thementorimpact.com.